Hi everyone, let's start third part. So let's see which one is it. First two done, third one is vehicle condition. So total 79 questions. Okay, let's start. What's the purpose of a preheating device? First option to heat the seat, to heat the combustion chamber. Third, to heat the gearbox. Fourth, to heat the cab. So, to heat the combustion chambers. I think second one. Yes, that's right. What's the advantage of energy saving tires? Increased rolling resistance, greater uh, tread depth reduced rolling resistance third one i think reduced rolling resistance yes what's most likely to cause a burst tire frequent gear changing in wearing conditions always operating in cool weather running tires under inflated mixing tires with different I think third one, running tires under inflated. Right. What do heated fuel lines prevent? The radiator from freezing, the windows from misting, the cap temperature from dropping, the diesel from solidifying. So what do heated fuel lines prevent? So I think the radiator from freezing. I think one. I think first of all, radiator from freezing or diesel from solidifying. Okay, let's go number four diesel from solidifying right you have stoked on a farm level surface what's the first thing you must do before you uncouple the trailer uncouple the electrical lines lower the trailer legs to the ground release the pop Think, release the brake air lines apply the parking brake so first thing apply the parking brake right you are checking your vehicle what should you do if you discover an air leak in the braking system check the leak from time to time on your journey stop your journey and report the fault on your return Leave the vehicle parked and report the fault immediately. And drive slowly to the nearest garage. I think third one. Leave the vehicle parked and report the fault immediately. Right. What's the most likely cause if your steering starts to feel heavy? So burst rear tire, wet road, and icy road. Faulty power straining, yes, that's the one. What would be illegal? Using a tire with a tread depth of 1.3 millimeter, using a tire with exposed ply or cord. Yeah, second one. Right. When should wheel nuts be checked? Just after driving on a motor, soon after initial tightening. So yes, soon after initial tightening. Right. What's the final thing you should do after recoupling a trailer? Release the trailer parking brake. Connect the brake lines, connect the electric lines. I think release first one, release the trailer parking brake. When should your lorry coupling system be checked and lubricated? Um, 
yearly, every six months, regularly. So okay, fourth one I think regularly, right? What could happen if you overfill your engine with oil? Exhaust emissions could be reduced. Some gas kits might be damaged. Yes, second one. Some gas kits might be damaged. Right. What should you do if your power assisted steering fails suddenly? So continue driving to the nearest repair center, return to the depot, continue journey at a slow speed. No, no, no. Park and get help. Fourth one. Park and get help. Right. What do the codes shown on the side walls of bus and lorry tires refer to? It referred to maximum load, minimum temperature, running pressure. I think maximum load or running pressure. Maximum load, running pressure. So, okay, fourth one, running pressure, wrong, so the correct answer is maximum load, okay, what's the fifth wheel coupling used for, to attach airlines to the trailer, to connect the trailer unit to the trailer, to support the trailer when it's detached, to prevent the trailer from check knifing. I think to connect the trailer unit to the trailer. You notice that one of your tires has a bulge in the sidewall. What will happen if you drive the vehicle? Your speedometer will give an incorrect reading. The vehicle will become unstable on corners. Your tachograph reading won't be accurate. You will break the law and risk prosecution. Yes, that's the one, fourth one. Why should your engine oil be changed at the recommended intervals? To prevent oil leaks, to reduce friction and wear. Yes, that's the one, to reduce friction and wear. What would you secure with a dog clip? The parking brake, the kingpin release handle, the diff lock, the air lines. The kingpin release handle, yes, second one. Right. What should you do before changing a wheel on your vehicle? Dismantle the wheel and tire, go to someone to check the tires, use wheel chokes. Use wheel chokes if available. Leave the parking brake off. Third one, use wheel chokes if available. What could happen if there isn't enough oil in your engine? It may run faster, it may produce more power, it may break down. Yes, third one. Why do air tanks on brake systems need to be drained? To remove rainwater that's seeped into the system. To remove any oil leaks that collect here. To remove moisture drawn in from the atmosphere. Yes, to remove moisture drawn in from the atmosphere. Right. Your vehicle has broken down at night on a two-way road. How should you try to leave the vehicle? So, third one, on the left of the road. Right. Which tool is essential for fitting a road wheel? So, torque wrench, first one. Right. What's it advisable to do when you replace a tubeless tire? 
have the valve checked fit the same valve clean the valve replace the valve yes fourth one right what proportion of the width of a tire must have at least the legal minimum depth of thread uh, should be three quarter one half five eighths one quarter i think three quarter first one right your vehicle suffers a tire blowout how could this create a hazard for other road users so scattered debris yeah first one right what could happen if you overfill your engine with oil better handling longer service intervals loss of power third one loss of power right where should you park your vehicle before checking the engine oil level on sloping ground on flat surface second where does a high pressure fuel injector deliver fuel so third one into the combust combustion chamber into the carburetor third one right you are checking your vehicle tires before starting a long motorway journey. What check should be made on each tire? Air pressure, wall clearance, tire profile tracking. First, air pressure. How frequently should the components of a fifth wheel coupling be inspected? Daily, yearly, monthly, weekly. Hmm. I think which one monthly I think monthly okay third one right where can you get advice about carrying out repairs to your vehicle workshop manuals eu and uk directives dvla guidelines notes yeah third one dvla guide guidance guidance notes no where can you get advice about carrying out repairs to your vehicle so right answer is workshop manuals okay your vehicle has double rear, rear wheels. Why should you check them before leaving a building site? To make sure the diff lock is disengaged. To make sure bricks or debris aren't wedged between the wheels. Yes, that's the one. While driving, your engine oil warning light comes on. Why could it be dangerous to continue driving? You will need to have the vehicle serviced. The brakes will fail. You will need to replace the carburetor. The engine will be damaged. So, fourth one engine may be damaged. Right. A loud buzzer sounds in your vehicle. What's this most likely be most likely to indicate? low tire pressure low oil pressure low fuel level low air pressure fourth one low air pressure right on motorways you are usually driving at higher speeds for long distances what effect can this have on your tires so they will be more likely to overheat and disintegrate yes that's the one what does this warning light on the instrument panel mean door open braking system fault low oil pressure battery discharge second braking system fault right when should you check the oil level in your engine so 
fourth one when the engine is cold why is it important to avoid overfilling the engine with oil it could increase pressure in the engine and cause damage mm. yes first one it could increase pressure in the engine and cause damage right you are about to start a long journey midway through the day what should you do if you notice that the side lights work but the headlights are faulty drive only if the weather is good don't drive until they are repaired yes second one at a driver and vehicle standards agency roadside check your vehicle is found to have serious defects and you may no longer use it who will dvsa share this information with fourth the traffic commissioner right what will happen if you follow a regular vehicle maintenance schedule it will increase it will reduce breakdowns second what's the most likely reason for a diesel engine vehicle running erratically in very cold weather so the endurance brake engaging the air conditioning not working the fuel partly solidifying the speed limiter operating so the fuel partly solidifying okay third one right where can you get advice to help carry out minor repairs DVL guidance notes, health and safety executive, EU and UK directives, the vehicle handbook. Uh, the vehicle handbook, fourth one, right. What does it mean if the ignition warning light comes on while you are driving? that's there's a hydraulic fault the air pressure is low the oil pressure is low there's an electrical fault yes fourth one what happens to diesel fuel when when it gets hot fourth one it expands what does this warning light on the instrument panel mean low water pressure low oil pressure low oil pressure second how can vehicle breakdowns be reduced by driving slowly by regular cleaning by regular servicing third what's the purpose of the oil filter to give better fuel consumption to collect metal particles from the oil yes second what should you check before you drive off a muddy building site onto the road the diff lob is disengaged the diff lock is disengaged yes first one when would you use kick down on a vehicle that has automatic transmission to give quicker acceleration third one before starting a journey you want to check your brake system warning lights what can you do when these aren't are not operated by the ignition switch So, hmm, pump the brake pedal a number of times. Look for a check switch on 
look for a check switch on the dashboard okay fourth one all right what should you do if the brake pedal becomes hard to press park and phone for help first you are driving a lorry along a motorway you notice that you are losing uh, tread from one of your tires what should you do stop on the hard shoulder and change the wheel continue driving and leave by the next exit stop on the hard shoulder and phone for assistance right third what can you add to diesel fuel to prevent it from becoming less effective at low temperatures anti-waxing additives first you have had to change a wheel on your vehicle when should the wheel nuts be checked again shortly afterwards second you are uncoupling a trailer what must you do before disconnecting any of the airlines apply the trailer parking brake third right in very cold weather moisture can freeze in your vehicle's air storage tanks what can you do to help prevent this from happening so drain the tanks daily fourth one right what's the main reason for cleaning your wheels and tires when you leave a building site to prevent the tires from damaging the road surface to stop mud to stop mud dropping under the road i think first to prevent the tires from damaging the road surface first wrong to stop mud dropping onto the road okay you are driving along a motorway what should you do if the air pressure warning device starts to operate stop immediately in the lane you are in stop on the hot shoulder as soon as possible second what must vehicle operators provide for their drivers hands-free mobile communication system of fuel saving incentive scheme a system for reporting vehicle defects a daily update on all motorway hold ups Mm. a hands-free mobile communication system first wrong a system for reporting vehicle defects okay why are uh, energy saving tires effective they have a reduced rolling resistance third you are driving a new articulated lorry that's fully laden you notice that the steering feels heavy what's the most likely reason fourth one the power steering is faulty what should you check for wear or damage on a drawbar unit mm. Kingpin release handle, eyelet coupling, fifth wheel, door clip. Fourth door clip. No, wrong. So eyelet coupling. Okay. Why should you carry out a daily walk? around check before setting off to check for any defects first one how often should the components of the fifth wheel coupling be inspected 
every 15,000 miles, every 9,000 miles, every 3,000 miles, every 6,000 miles, fourth one. You discover that one of your rear brake light bulbs has failed. How soon should it be replaced? So first immediately, yes. The driver and vehicle standard agency and the police carry out sport checks for faulty vehicles. What will happen to the vehicle if serious defects are found? It will be impounded until a new driver is found. It will be restricted to 30 miles for the remainder of the journey. It will be prohibited from further use until the defects are rectified. Yes, third one. When should antifreeze be used in the cooling system? When starting from cold. When starting from cold all year round. Uh, third one, all, all year round, right. When should you check the wheel nuts on your vehicle? Before any journey, only before long trips, annually every 1000 miles. Before any journey, first. Why should you use an approved coolant solution in your engine's cooling system? For easier starting from cold, for effective cab heating to protect the coolant from freezing. Yes, third. A tire has been replaced on your vehicle. What precautions should be taken when tightening the wheel nuts? Fully tighten each nut before moving to the next. Tighten the nuts with an air-operated power tool. Tighten the nuts evenly with a torque wrench. Third. What should you do if you notice that two wheels not two wheel nuts are missing from one of the wheels on your vehicle park and phone for assistance yes first your steering suddenly becomes heavy to turn what could make this happen an uneven road surface a faulty parking brake a fault with the power assisted steering third What's the minimum depth of thread required over three quarters of the breadth, breadth of a lorry tire? So, three quarter. Five. So one millimeter right. You hit the curb at speed. What part of your vehicle should you check for damage? Lights, tires, brakes, exhaust, tires. What should you do if thick black smoke is coming from the exhaust of your vehicle? Stop in a safe place and get help. First, bus and lorry tires have cords on their sidewalls. What do these cords refer to? Running pressure, speed capability. Yes, speed capability. When can selective or block gear changing be used? To change either up or down in gear. To change down in gear only, to change gear to a low speed only, hmm, to change up in gear only. So first one, to change either up or down in gear. Finish test, 94% correct, that's wrong. What do the codes shown on the sidewalls of bus and lorry tires refer to? So correct answer is maximum load. Okay. Next wrong one. 
Where can you get advice about carrying out repairs to your vehicle? Workshop manuals. Okay. Right, 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 so wrong. What's the main reason for cleaning your wheels and tires when you leave a building site? To stop mud dropping onto the road. Okay. Next. What must vehicle operators provide for their vehicle? for their drivers a system for reporting vehicle defects okay next that's it all done okay then thanks for watching bye